Tonight in News Extra, the man who committed what may be the crime of the century. His name is John Wayne Gacy, convicted of killing 33 innocent people and destroying hundreds of lives. He's never talked to anyone about the case until tonight. His murder spree was first discovered on a cold December day when the first of his victims were found in the crawl space beneath his home. They were taken out one by one as the world watched. For 13 years, Gacy refused to talk. But tonight, he's breaking that silence, walking out from death row in Menard State Prison to speak one-on-one -on -one with Channel 2's Walter Jacobson. Walter is here now to tell us what Gacy had to say in an exclusive interview. Walter. Quite a bit. Well, I spent uh, two and a half hours with John Gacy listening to a whole new story about his case. He was rambling and often inconsistent, but always, always very cagey. Thirteen years ago, he told the police how he murdered his victims. Now he's telling me he never did. People don't want to know the truth and the, and the honesty of it. If they want to be convinced or brainwashed into what they believe, then fine, then go ahead and kill me. But vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, because you will have executed somebody that didn't commit the crime. Those are the words of John Wayne Gacy, pleading innocence from death row at Menard State Penitentiary 13 years after being convicted of his crimes, the most notorious serial killer of our time. When they paint the image that I was this monster who, who picked up like these altar boys along the street and swatted them like flies, I said, this is ludicrous. But the jury didn't find it ludicrous. After barely two hours' deliberation, its verdict was murder by Gacy 33 times. 29 bodies buried in that house of his on Somerdale, a crime of horrendous proportions. In the crawl space underneath, bodies covered with lime and encased in plastic, dug up a few days before Christmas and carried into the December cold, one after another after another. But despite all this evidence, he says he has proof he didn't do it. Here's one of dozens of examples of what he calls proof. I've taken th uh, five and a half hours, three and a half hours of truth here. And under, under sodium amethyl, the maximum amount that I could have, it shows that I have no knowledge of the crime whatsoever. Never have had. But this is where his attempt to change history, which is what he thinks will get him a new trial, begins to break down. There is no proof anywhere that he ever took truth serum. Now, it's not only a matter of physical evidence. It's a character issue as well. Many times during our interview, he tried to portray himself as a good guy an ethical, hard-working family man. Here's how he describes himself as a father. Loving and caring. I, I've always uh, looked after my children, even now. What kind of values you remember imparting to them? The kind were of values? Strict, were you strict with them, too? No, not, father, as, no not as strict as, no. A lot of things that my dad did, I, I refused to do, because I, I don't, see, I don't believe in hitting, hitting children. I don't believe in, in uh, spoiling a child, either. My, my values are such that if crazy. you give enough you, love to the children... You're accused of murdering 33 kids, <laughs> and you say you didn't believe in hitting. I mean... Well, anybody that knows... You see, first of all, you're basing, you're basing this garbage on what you've heard of me. And what the jury said, and what the courts of appeal have said. And the prosecutor who put him in jail says Gacy is a ruthless and sadistic killing machine. He's responsible. He knew exactly what he was doing. He planned it in advance. He carried it out, and he enjoyed it. And he admitted it. In fact, boasted of it to the police. But now, 14 years later, he's denying it and talking to me about it. What does Prosecutor Kunkel think of that? He's a desperate man. He's going to die in two or three years. He's going to be executed when the law is finally carried out. And he'll clutch at any straw. Two and a half hours of clutching at straws, cunning and manipulative denials. But if you listen carefully, you catch him slipping up. About John Bukovic, for instance, his second victim. What happened to uh, what, what happened in the Bukovic case? Where was he picked up, and uh, how did he get to the house, and what happened with him? I don't want to go into I don't want to go into the other uh, the five that I know about. Just take it that I did. Uh, Bukovic is not one that I killed, so I don't know nothing about him. The, the little bit that I know about him is that he was an employee of my. See, when you, when you look about this this recall business. And, and I'm not a prosecutor, John, but you just I know you're not. Bukovic Wait a minute. Is, is not one that you killed, which suggests that maybe, oh. in fact, there were others that you did kill. 
No, no. Okay, I'm, so, I'm sorry if I led you to believe. No, strike it then. That is wrong. But it's uh, too late to strike it. There are others he killed, children he lured into his home anyway who didn't get out alive. When he was arrested, he told the police what he did and how he did it with a rope that he used as a tourniquet. Now he says he didn't do it and shows me his rope trick to explain how the police misunderstood that and more of what he's twisting into his pleas of innocence tomorrow. Linda, Bill? Fascinating, Walter.